I got a client who wants me to make some changes on this Formula One car right here, which he intends to use for 3D printing. Now, there's good news and bad news to this scenario that we have right here. The bad news is the topology is completely fucked up, okay? This makes it pretty difficult to work with the object. It makes it difficult to make the changes that we want to make. I talk about this all the time in my videos. I talked about this in the ebook as well. So this, this is going to give us some trouble. Now, the good news is the topology is completely fucked up, which means we don't really have to worry too much about the topology because it's already about as bad as it can get, okay? So the change that we're going to be making here today is on this rear engine cover back here. Okay, I'm going to pull up a picture for you, which is going to show you what we're supposed to do. And that's this thing right here. As you can see here, we have these grills in the back. There's one, two, three, four grills. And there's this clean cut. And we also have this dent back here. And in this model that we have received, originally, it came like this. Now, I was messing around with something over here on this side to see if my methodology is going to work. But we're supposed to take this to a better version of this in this video today. So that's what we're going to do. You're going to watch me suffer with this topology as long as I got to suffer with it. Okay. So here's the problem. When you're working with triangles, there's very little that you can do. For example, you can't really select edge loops with alt right click. As you know, if you have a cube or a cylinder or something like that, if you have a loop cut over here, you, with alt right click, you can just select this entire area and then you can do something with it which we can't really do in this case. We can't use alt right click. It's very difficult to select surfaces like this because it gives us a complete mess. So if, if we zoom in over here, we have a whole lot of little triangles, which we got to clean up. So it's very difficult to work with this because of the triangles. Okay, now I hear some of you tell me, Ari, and there's alt J. Alt J is going to clean up your triangles. It's going to de-triangulate tomorrow. Well, let me show you what happens when you press alt J. If you just select everything with A and you press alt J, which is supposed to detect where you have two triangles which form a quad together and turn them into a quad like this if you do it on, on an individual level. It's supposed to do that, but if we just select everything and go Alt J, as you can see, it doesn't really give us a very clean result. Now, it works in a lot of places, but in a lot of places it doesn't work at all. Okay, so we're gonna use this to some degree to help us clean up some shit, but we're not gonna be able to do everything with it, all right? So basically the first thing that we're gonna do is completely cut out this entire piece right here and we're just going to replace it with grills like this okay so we're basically supposed to have a hole in this shape to begin with which means we have to remove this entire surface on the inside and then i think we should also extend this cut to somewhere back here all right and then we can maybe use this shape maybe we're going to use another one because this is busted we have to push it all the way to the edge here we're going to see what happens but in order to do that we first have to de-triangulate some of the surfaces on the inside on this gap right here okay so we can work with it so we can use this gap for something else all right so inside of this hole we're going to be able to place a different panel maybe we can de-triangulate this okay now there's not really a correct way to do this i'm just going to sit here and play around with this a little bit and see what i can figure out see what's going to end up working best and mostly that workflow is first going to consist of just selecting random triangles and dissolving them occasionally i'm going to be able to use alt j uh, to, dis to disassemble the triangles or to merge them into quads. But at the end of the day, that just gives me the same thing as dissolving edges manually. But as you can see right here, Alt-J works in this case pretty well, which means I can just keep selecting all of these surfaces all the way over here. Alt-J to turn them into quads. For the most part, it seems to work the way I want it to work. And again, the reason that we're doing this now is so that we can select some of the edge loops on the inside here and we can just slide them with double G and we can remove them, we can dissolve them, we can do something to get rid of them, okay? We can work with this. This is gonna be a lot more workable if we just have all quads, right? So I'm gonna see if I can, if there's an easy way to select this, but there isn't really, because as you can see, normally, normally you can use alt right click, normally you can select this one and then control or shift control and it's gonna select everything in between, but in this case, it also selects the surrounding faces so there's not really any other choice here but to just manually select every single fucking triangle and then just try and dissolve it or use Alt-J Alt -J to merge these into a quad, okay? And, and that works pretty well here. So this is going to be an extremely tedious process and in this case, it's probably a little bit easier to just select these diagonal edges individually, all right? So I don't have to select two faces at a time and then, and then I can just press X, dissolve edges and as you can see, that works quite well. So we're almost done with this segment back here. This is going to be step number one, all right? 
I'm going to take care of these edges up here as well. And then I'm going to show you what the purpose of this is, what, I'm, what I intend to do here. See, now that I have all quads here, let's also get rid of these so I can prove my point a little bit further. Now that we also uh, now that we have all quads here, now it becomes much easier to use alt right click to select this entire segment or in vertex select mode, I can select this entire vertex loop over here, which is also going to be selected over here. We're going to be able to extend the selection all the way back here if we clean up these other triangles up here and down here as well. Now, I'm not going to walk you through that entire process because I'm about to do the same shit here that I did over there. And I don't think nobody wants to sit here and watch me do the same shit over and over again. So I'm going to skip to when I cleaned up these edges and then we're going to move a little bit further. So now I cleaned up the geometry on the inside of this gap here, which means now if I go to vertex select mode, I can zoom in on the bottom and I can use alt right click to select this vertex on the inside here. And then as you can see, that selects an entire segment around this entire panel, which is covering this hole right here. Now, the reason I'm trying to do this is because now when I have this selected, I can very easily just press control E mark seam. And when you mark seams, when you when you surround an area with seams and seams are normally used to do UV unwrapping so you can tell Blender how to project the texture on a surface and all this shit. But what I'm doing here is I'm trying to tell Blender which area I want to somehow separate. OK, so when you mark seams like this, for example, let's select a surface like this as just a simple example. When you mark seams around an area like this, when you press control E mark seam, it's very easy to select this surface now. So you just go to face select mode, you hover your mouse over it and you press L and that instantly selects that entire surface. You don't have to manually go selecting this, which as you know, is extremely difficult when you have only triangles. Okay. So my idea was I'll just be able to select this entire panel here with L and then I'm going to be able to delete it. Now, the problem is that we still have some geometry connected over here. As you can see, this is a complete atrocity and that makes it very difficult to work with. And this is an open border right here. So we can't just select this with L because as you can see, it's just going to leak out and spill everywhere. We're going to select everything. So what I'm going to try to do instead is make a cut from here to here so that I can just delete this entire part as well and everything over here. I'm going to select this entire area and I'm going to connect that with the border down here so I can just wipe out everything. I can just cut everything up and just get rid of it forever. All right. So to do that, I'm going to press K to activate my knife cut, which I'm going to click on right here with. And then I'm, I'm going to extend it to back here, hit enter. As you can see, that gives me a new segment that goes from here to here. And we've got to figure out a way to do the same thing with this part. OK, it doesn't have to be exact. We can just pull that to over here somewhere. All right, enter. Maybe we can go to top view to make sure that it's aligned properly. It doesn't have to be exact by any means. And then to get the other segment, we're going to make another cut over here. All right. So something like this should do it. As you can see, we got a bevel on the inside, so this is not going to work. We've got to make another cut like this. All right. Maybe we should bring that a little bit closer. So this is going to give us the geometry that we need to have here to create or to extend this gap. Now, I'm not sure if that's really a good idea because we don't really want to keep the same trench shape. I just want to cut this shit out properly and make it disappear completely. That's what I want to do. So maybe what I'll do is just select this entire segment, which means I've just wasted my time detriangulating everything. I'm going to select this entire segment on the outside of the trench like this control E mark seam. I'll extend that over here to this side, make another cut here with K. I can slide this up with double G a little bit and I can mark that as well. And now I'm just going to connect these two borders over here at the top like this control E mark seam. And now with L, I should be able to select everything. As you can see, indeed, I can X delete faces, get rid of it. We're going to big ass hole right there. Let's take care of these vertices up here that I created with my knife cuts. X dissolve vertices. I don't want those. I can also slide these to the corners. I don't know what, what's even going on here. Maybe we can do a triangle here just in case. So now we got a hole here and we can do here whatever we want to do. All right. We can create any type of shape that we want to create. So luckily, this shape is quite simple that we're trying to create. We basically just have to fill this with some clean geometry and then we can cut it up, shrink it, like kind of push these edges on the inside, make sure it's nice and round. And we're going to be able to do that without too much trouble. Now we have to fill this with clean geometry so that we can work with it. So we want to fill this with quads only. And to do that, I would like to use a grid fill. Now, when you use a grid fill, OK, I, I don't know if you guys know what a grid fill tool is, you're going to see in a second. But when you use a grid fill tool, it's very important that you have matching geometry on the sides of this cut right here. So we have to have the same number of edges on the left side 
as we do on the right side over here. And we have to have the same number of edges at the top as we do on the bottom. That's going to make the grid fill tool work and give us clean geometry. So we have to measure this somehow. The easiest way to measure this is to go up here to this viewport over these menu, check statistics, all right? And that gives you these numbers over here on the left side. And these numbers are going to show you how many edges you got in your scene. We got 11,122. I think that's how many species of ants there are. There's like 11,800 species of fucking ants. Anyway, it also tells you how many edges you got selected. So we're going to select this edge over here. And with control right click, we'll select this edge. Make sure that only the seams are selected. And then you can see nine out of 11,122 edges are selected, which means we got nine edges up here. Let's see how many we got down here. If we select this, as you can see, we got eight. So we got a problem. Either we got to get rid of an edge up here or we got to add another edge down here. And we want to we, we don't want to have too much geometry here by any means. So we're going to see if we can remove something instead. And in fact, I think it would probably be nicer if we didn't have this many edges. We should we should consider how many edges we want to have here, because if you look at what I did earlier, each of these segments is going to have to have four edges because that's going to allow us to create a nice curve like this. So each grill is supposed to have four edges, which means four grills, four edges each. That's 16 edges, right? So if we have eight right now, that's not enough. So we can do something to add more edges to make this a little bit easier to work with. Or we can just fill this with four edges to begin with. And then we can subdivide the inside. Or I got an even better idea that just occurred to me. We can completely separate the grills from the surface on the outside, which means it doesn't matter how many edges we got on the outside. But let's just do something to keep it reasonable. Let's go with eight. So we're going to dissolve an edge up here since up here we have nine edges. All right. Here we have a very long edge and here we have two very short edges. So we're going to try and get rid of one of these edges up here. So it matches with this one down here. And that should be pretty easy because again, we don't really have to worry about the topology. We can just do something like this and then connect this with a triangle just to keep it uniform in some way. And now we have eight edges up here and eight edges down here. Hopefully we're going to be able to connect those pretty well. Now let's check the sides. How many do we have here? We have 13 edges on the left side or the right side. And then on the left side, we have how many? We should probably slide this down here so it connects so it makes a little bit more sense. Over here, we got 14 edges. How many do we have here? Do we have 14 as well? Here we have 13 edges. So we just have to get rid of one more edge here, which is pretty easy because it's all triangles. So we can just maybe take this edge and slide it down or something and then bring this one down here a little bit more. We can also use our loop tools, W loop tools space. If you don't have this, this uh, set of tools right here, I get asked about this all the time. This is the best set of tools in Blender. It's called loop tools. And you used to be able to go to just edit preferences, add ons and type in loop and check this box right here. But for some reason, you know, every, every time they update Blender, they fuck everything up. They change up the tools. They they fix shit that ain't broke. OK, and I think in Blender 4.2, you have to download the loop tools manually, which is completely ridiculous. Well, I don't I don't understand why that's not in the program. Why would you remove features? It's like the most powerful and the most useful tool ever. Anyway, you might have to download it if you're using Blender 4.2. I highly recommend you do that. That's why I don't use Blender 4.2 because I don't feel like downloading it. I don't like any of the improvements they're making. Fuck them. I'd be using Blender 3.6 or 2.7 if I wasn't making YouTube videos and other people didn't have to follow what I'm doing with newer versions. But anyway, so now we have we have how many 13 edges over here, 13 edges over there. So now we should be able to fill this with a clean grid fill. So we can just select everything, alt right click to select this entire segment. And then you're going to go up here to face, click on grid fill. And as you can see, it gives us a pretty damn clean filling. All right. We got one segment, two segments, three segments, or we got one, two, three. And then the fourth one, the fourth one, as you can see, if we try to match it by width, the we have we have some leftovers over here which means we got to somehow distribute this geometry a little bit better, but I'm not going to do any of that because I am going to, excuse me guys, my mother is calling me, but I, I can't pick up because I'm recording. I'm in, I'm in production. So we're going to disconnect this surface completely. Oh shit. That was not supposed to happen. We're going to disconnect this surface completely by, by selecting it like this. Or we can also just press L because it's separated by seams. Now we're going to press P separate by selection. And now we can do something with this surface because if you look at the reference image that we were using before, it's like the grills are not connected 
really with the outside. They probably are underneath, but it's not really visible. Okay, so you can't really see that. But in any case, we probably should do something about this. I'm still having, having trouble deciding whether we should make this connected or not. Either way, we're going to have sharp edges on the inside. So I think it's not worth the time that it's going to take to make sure that everything's connected. So instead, we're just going to go free range. We're going to do it. We're going to go our own way. We're going to figure out how to create his grill separate from the body of this car. All right. Now, the problem is that we have to separate this into four sections. And this is a problem because we don't have the, the geometry is not arranged in a way that allows us to do that very well. All right. So we can separate this, for example, with V, which means here's my idea. We're going to add loop cuts here and we're going to select a vertex loop like this. And we're going to make that nice and smooth sort of like this. OK, and that's going to be how we're going to form our grills. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. Alt S like this. I'm just giving you a quick overview of how I'm going to do that. So I'm, I, tear, I tear the section with V and then I select only this edge loop on the side here. And with Alt S, I deflate that a little bit and that gives me my grill. Now, the problem is over here, we got a bit of a leftover, right? What do we do if we try to make sure that all these have the same length? We got some leftover. So what do we do about that, right? Let's, let's check our picture and see if we can maybe cheat this in some way. Maybe one of the grills is a little bit longer. As you can see, it looks like these two are a little bit wider than this one. In any case, they're not perfectly consistent, which means we got a little bit of wiggle room, so to speak. OK, so we should be able to do something about probably probably we can let's let's go from the back. OK, let's say this is going to be one section. I'm going to tear over here. And the reason I'm selecting this edge loop like this is because if you tear this with a V, right? Let me try to merge it again. If you tear this part with V, well, now you have two edge loops on the same part. And it can be very difficult for, for Blender to understand which one we want to select, right? You can't really control which one you're going to select. Sometimes it selects the right one. Sometimes it selects the left one. So you can't really control that. So I just select the face loop and face select mode. Then in, in vertex select mode with shift alt right click, I just deselected this vertex loop. And now I just have this selected and I have guarantee. I have a guarantee that I'm going to select the edge loop that I want to select. Anyway, let's deflate that and give me this one and this one. And now they, they get a little bit wider, which means we can make we can we can run a little cheat code here and let's figure out how we're going to do that because we still have to make them even. And right now there's no way that they're going to be even right as you can see this one. This one over here is absolutely massive. And then this one, you know, it doesn't really make too much sense. So we're going to take some geometry from up here. Let's say we're going to take this entire segment, which for some reason does not want to get merged with this. That's because it's a separate object. That's right. We're going to take this entire section over here, including the vertices on the outside here. OK, and we're going to slide those with double G so that we can bring it a little bit closer so that these two segments are going to be the same width approximately. As you can see right now, they kind of are. All right. Now, this didn't get uh, we didn't we weren't able to slide this at the same time. So let's do that manually again. And our geometry again is a complete abomination. This doesn't make any sense the way this is connected. So I don't think we should just I think we should just completely forget about this outer geometry. It's it's a complete disaster. It's about as bad as it can be. So now let's try and see if these are approximately the same kind of almost, but I feel like it should still be a little bit more to the right. So let's slide it just a little bit more like this. Tear it with V Alt S. I think that's pretty good. OK, now it also seems like this one is a lot shorter than this one. So we should probably do something about that. So let's go way back. Let's go way back to and undo a bunch of steps. I think this one should slide a little bit in this direction like this. All right. We can check the length here. I don't know if it's worth doing that, if it's worth performing any sort of measurements. But we can do that also over here in the in the viewport overlays menu, or maybe this one over here, which gives you edge or polygon data and all this shit. So you can check edge length and then you can you can fill two edges with F and it's going to tell you how how long this area here is, as you can see, 0 0.844. I don't want to take it that far. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. But now Let's try to deflate this one more time. Also, this part, I think that's okay. I think these are pretty nice. I think it's not a problem if it's kind of gradually increasing in size. And then once again, we have to slide this one and bring it over here. It might even be a better idea to use this one. But anyway, V to tear it. Give me this over here. Alt S. 
I think we should probably go a little bit further, but maybe it's not necessary. Something like this is gonna do it in, in any case, all right? So now we have to uh, place these underneath the surface a little bit because as you can see, they're kind of under the surface. So we're gonna select everything, but not this one over here because this one has to be connected on the rear edge. So we're gonna deselect this part, maybe even this part, and then with Alt S, we're gonna deflate everything, but just a little bit, right? Just to bring it underneath the surface. Maybe we can also take this one down with us a little bit. And now that we have that, now we just have to do something to make these grills a little bit smoother. We don't have to worry about it too much. We don't have to make it perfect, but we're definitely gonna have to add a little bit more geometry, add a couple more loop cuts with Control R. I'm gonna try to make it so I have a, uh, the same amount of face loops and edge loops on every part here. As you can see, this one has five segments like this, while all the others have four. So we're gonna do something, we're gonna get rid of one of them, X dissolve edges over here perhaps. Now we first have to make all the edges equal in length, all of these edges like this. So this one, this one, this one, this one have to have the same length, where we're gonna use our loop tools again. So you gotta get your loop tools now. You can't get away without any loop tools now. And to do that, to do that, you can select a couple of edges like this, okay? So a couple of horizontal edges, which follow the direction of, of the car, let's say, like this, on one on each grill. And you're gonna go up here to select, select loops, edge rings. And that's going to select all the edges which are parallel with that edge, but belong to the same perpendicular face loop, if that makes any sense. So this, this face loop is perpendicular to this edge over here. And you're selecting all the edges on that face loop, which you just saw a second ago, which are parallel with the selected edge, right? So that's kind of what this tool does. And now that we have all these edges selected, we want to extend these selections. So we select all the edge loops in which these edges here are participating, which means this one, this one, this one, this one, and so on, right? And to do that, you go to select, select loops, edge loops, and there you have it. We have all the horizontal edges here selected. So now I'm gonna go W, loop tool space, that makes them equally long. And now I'm gonna go W loop tools relax. That's going to make everything a little bit smoother. I'm gonna change the interpolation here to linear, or maybe I'm just gonna change the number of iterations to like three, because that basically repeats this process like three times. I might have to make some manual adjustments, but I'm gonna see if that's going to be necessary. I think the grills look pretty cute. I think everything is looking pretty good. Although I think it would be, it would be a good idea to make these a little bit straighter. Right, so these are pretty straight. And if I look at mine from side view like this, they're pretty damn straight as well. So maybe that's not even gonna be necessary. Let's try top view. I think maybe we should, we should try and straighten this out. So I'll place my 3D cursor on this bottom vertex down here. And from top view, I'll scale this down to zero. 3D cursor is gonna be the pivot point. Scale this down to zero on the Y axis. Okay, that makes it perfectly straight. Do the same thing over here in the front which means maybe I gotta push this backwards a little bit just to make sure there's no gap here, okay? Let's do the same thing on all the other grills. Push this backwards a little bit more. I'm not gonna do anything here because this one's supposed to be connected, so we, wanna, we don't wanna mess with this geometry and misalign some of the vertices. We wanna be able to merge them. And now, I think we're pretty good with these grills. So now we're gonna select this face loop or this edge loop on the outside Let's try, let's try doing another grid fill just so we can get some direction because what we're about to do is gonna require us to have direction for our geometry. So the, re the way you can get direction is if you have a face, right? This face has what's called a normal line. I don't know if you guys ever studied mathematics, um, uh, but in mathematics, when you're studying like functions and shit like that, I, mean, I think this is also like in vector math when you have a plane or something, I think also the same, the same terminology applies. In, in mathematics, when you have a surface or when you have a line, uh, in this case, you have a surface, there is a line which is perpendicular to that surface. So if this is a perfectly flat surface, there is an imaginary line which is perfectly perpendicular to this surface, meaning at every point, it has a, a perfect right angle to this surface. Okay, that's the normal line of this face. In other words, it basically tells you the direction which this face is facing, if you want to explain this to your five-year-old daughter for whatever reason, okay? So now you can go up here to me uh, mesh edit mode overlays and you can ch click on this box right here called the normals, display normals, and a little blue line pops up. We're gonna make that a little bit bigger using this slider over here. 
as you can see that's exactly what i just described it's perfectly perpendicular to the surface if you go side view this is going to be a right angle this is a right angle so 90 degrees here and there so this has given us the direction of um, of this surface right here and when you extrude something it moves in the direction of that line when you when you inflate something with alt s it moves in the direction of that line and when you have a curved surface like this let's say okay every face has its own normal line which means when we extrude this okay with alt s for example or let's say we extrude this then it takes the average direction if we do them all together but if we extrude this or we can press alt e extrude faces along normals that's going to extrude all the faces and they're all going to be pushed in the direction of this normal line as you can see right here so that's what we're trying to accomplish and you're only going to get these normal lines if you have a surface if you have faces you can't really do edges as you can see we can see everything here but we're gonna we're gonna remove this and now we're gonna take this edge loop over here go, go to face grid fill one more time we gotta adjust the numbers because this is all busted up i think our span was 13 or 14 edges was it something like that perhaps it was 13 edges i can't remember maybe we messed something up so now it doesn't work anymore we're gonna try to adjust the offset a little bit to see if it works indeed that works and now we're going to press alt e extrude faces along normals and just push this underneath the surface a little bit and the reason i'm doing this is so that i can get this edge over here on the side which is going to be basically the thickness of this panel on the outside right and i'm going to be sure that that's moving exactly in the right direction because i'm using extrude faces along normals like this so I just need a little bit of thickness and now X delete faces because I want to get rid of this surface. Maybe we need a little bit more. So let's push it down a little further. X delete faces. And now I'm also going to delete these faces on the back here because I don't need a wall back here. This is supposed to be connected. So delete the vertices or the faces back here. So this can stay connected, but this has to be a wall, right? Now we also got to push this a little bit further to the front so we can't see this part, right? It's make this entire grill a little bit longer perhaps maybe we can make both of these a little bit longer so we're going to select them 3d cursors over here scale them up on the y-axis to make them a bit longer okay i think this one should still be a bit longer as you can see you can adjust this pretty easily according to your needs okay and now as you can see because of the bad topology one of the reasons you need to do, use good topology is because of shading okay i talk about this all i'm not going to go i'm not trying to explain this shit for beginners because this is a complicated subject but your shading is going to be busted if you have triangles, if you have bad topology and all this. As you can see right here, it's all jagged. It's all fucked up. We don't want it looking like this. So we're going to mark these edges as sharps, okay? We're going to mark these edges as sharps like this. Although I'm probably going to have to revise this later on. I'm probably going to have to find a different solution, but I'm not really sure. Because this is meant for 3D printing and obviously a 3D printer is not going to have shading uh, functions the same as Blender. Okay, Blender shades this as smooth. But it doesn't change the surface. The surface is what it is. The 3D printer is going to print it like that. So I don't know if you have to mark sharps. Maybe we're going to have to do something else. But I'm going to figure this out with my client later on off camera. But for now, just for the aesthetics of this and just for my own comfort so I can see what's going on, I'm going to select this entire edge on the outside here. Control E, mark sharp. And as you can see now, this edge is nice and clean. It's a clean cut. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. So now. Let's also make sure that these grills are just beneath the surface. So we're going to inflate this a little bit with Alt S to make sure that this is touching the wall right there and also over here on this side. Okay. And now we we can almost merge this back with the rest of the body, but we still got to make sure that we take care of the shape underneath uh, on the sides of these panels. Uh, we have to make sure that that's going to be all good. All right. So this has to be a little bit nicer. This has to be a little bit of a, bit of a curve. And to do that, we can take this geometry from over here, all right? We can take this edge loop. You can separate this with P, separate by selection. And then you take that edge loop and we're going to merge that. Let me see if we can select just that edge loop. As you can see, there it is. Shift, select this object, Control J to merge it. And now we have some geometry over here, which is perfectly aligned with the bottom of the wall. We just have to make sure that we have enough vertices. So with Control R, I'm going to add a loop cut, slide it into place here. This vertex I'm going to align with the one over here. Merge that by distance. Shift W or M, merge by distance. Fill these faces over here. We need another, another loop cut over here, which, which we're going to place somewhere around here. And then we're going to snap this vertex to that one over there. 
because we know that one's exactly on the edge where it's supposed to be. We're going to fill this with F. That gives us a little bit of a surface here. And we also need the same thing down here. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to make that look good. Okay, so let's place another vertex somewhere around here. And then we're going to take this one from back here and align it. Oh, we should probably Yeah, we should align that with this one out here. And now we can fill this with F. We need another loop cut over here, fill this with F. Another one over here, we already have one. So fill this. And this one here, we have to we have to connect with this vertex and fill this with F. So now we have some sides, but we have to make them nice and smooth and round and cute looking. Okay, so this has to have a pretty nice looking shape over here, which is not supposed to be sharp like this, it's supposed to be more like a curve. So to do that, either we're going to add more geometry like this, which is going to allow us to use Alt S or to slide this. Obviously, if we have more geometry, we're going to be able to create a smoother shape. We can also deflate this a little bit more. Or we're going to slide these vertices a little bit closer to here, I think definitely we're going to have to add this loop cut. So we're going to keep that there. Okay, we're going to keep that there. I messed something up down here. So I have to clean this up a little bit first. Anyway, I'll, I'll do that off camera. But now we have this vertex, so we can slide this alt s inflate that a little bit. Let's do the same thing up here, we're going to slide this in a little bit more. Maybe we can add some more loop cuts here if we want to, I don't really want to because it's going to mess up my shading. And now that I have this shape, I'm going to take this entire face loop over here, and I'm going to try to deflate that a little bit. And then deselect this closer vertex loop and deflate this with alt s a little bit more. As you can see, that gives me a nice curved shape over here on the inside. And that looks a lot better. So I'm going to have to re I'm gonna have to remodel the shape of the grill a little bit. And I'm gonna have to do this for every single one of the grills, maybe I'll push it a little bit further down because I think that's going to look a lot better. Okay, maybe not that far down. So something like this. Also push these a little bit further. So it's nice and smooth. Now you just got to play around with this shape. There's no right or wrong way to do this. You just got to manually mess with the geometry here a little bit until you figure something out. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm going to spend probably the next 20 minutes of my life doing. But I'm going to do that off camera because now you get the idea. You pretty much see exactly how I figured this out. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit more. Uh, do the same thing for the rest of the grills. And I'm going to join them together with the body here. And when I do that, let me show you. Let me just uh, fast forward to that. I'm going to select this and this with shift right click, control J to merge them into the same object. And now, now if I select this segment over here, like this, I can just press M merge by distance, that's going to merge these vertices. And now there's no longer a gap. So there's no longer that sharp cut. So now it looks like this is the same panel back here. Okay. But anyway, I'm not going to do that now. Because you know, what? we don't we're not even going to have to do that. Because I just remembered that we're going to have to do this dent over here. So we're going to kind of have to melt this shit and push it inward. So let's do that super quick. Before we wrap it up. So we're not going to have to worry about this geometry over here. But in order to make this dent here, we first have to get rid of the triangles. And let's see if Alt J is going to serve us well here, we're going to select a surface back here to turn these into quads. And you have to be careful when you're selecting the, the, this because you have to make sure that you're selecting triangle pairs, which together are going to form a quad. All right. So X dissolve faces, not dissolve faces, we're going to press Alt J, that worked perfectly. So we're going to do the same thing one more time down here. And hopefully that's going to work as well. Maybe one more segment, we have to select everything down here, essentially, so like this. And like this, here, we have something else going on. So we're going to do that part manually. Let's see, we got one, two, one, two, three, four pairs, and then there's something else, something, something different going on down here. So we might have to do this a little differently. And maybe we won't select this pair. As you can see that the, the way that the geometry is connected is completely busted up, right? Let's separate this by selection one more time, because I don't want these to be together. I don't want this to be in the way of anything. The way this is connected is completely different. So we're just going to dissolve some of these edges manually here. And just as long as we have quads for the most part, it's going to be fine just so we can select them and work with them. So something like this. That's going to be okay, I think this is going to be fine. So let's dissolve these two as well. We can maybe slide this one down or something like that. Slide this a little bit further. Let's also get rid of some of the triangles back here. So again, this is a headache of a process, but that's the way it, uh, it is. That's the way it's, it has to be done. 
okay and now once we have this we just have to reshape this curve over here let's also let's also do something about this we should maybe make a cut from here to somewhere back here maybe we need some new geometry maybe we're going to take a triangle from over here i think there's a, there's an extra surface on top here like this so we're going to lift this up maybe that's just for decals or something we're going to make an extra cut right here where we no longer have to bend anything maybe even back here like this with the k with the knife tool all right and then join this vertex with this one over here j so now we have another cut we're going to dissolve all the edges on the inside here as you can see it's marvelous it's very easy to work with this shit because we don't have to worry about having triangles or anything like that because it's already completely infested with triangles so it doesn't really matter too much and now we're going to take this curve over here so this edge loop over here and we just have to reshape that and everything else is going to fall into place or one thing that we can do is use something called a curve tool okay the curve tool allows us to take two vertices from this segment right here with alt s we can deflate them and once we do that we can use the curve loop tools tool okay w loop tools curve and that's going to adjust this curve so it passes through those points in a smooth way as you can see this didn't work too well because we have to change the position we have to make sure that they're placed properly so we have to play around with this a little bit but the point is that we want a curve that goes kind of like this that goes kind of inwards like this but it's still pretty round on the sides right so it merges with the body in a smooth way all right w loop tools curve like this that still didn't work too well Let's try uh, drop this a little bit lower down again. Now that's okay. Now that's okay, but I'm going to take this entire segment, deselect the edges from the sides, W loop to space, which I'm probably going to have to do on the other vertices as well. W loop to space, and then I'm going to deselect the vertices from the corners. With Alt S, I'm going to inflate everything like this, just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Maybe I'll scale it up a little bit. Or inflate it a little bit more like this because there's supposed to be a smooth connection here all right then deselect one more vertex and inflate this a little bit more like this okay and maybe you can do that one more time a little bit more like this just don't, don't overdo it because you still need there to be a, a proper gap it still needs to go downwards properly as you can see it also moved everything inwards so now we're gonna have to make a cut between the start and the finish of this shape right here we can do that with J, that's gonna connect everything and now we can just cut this off or slide it backwards, boom. And now that we have the rough shape over here, which is kind of dented, we gotta figure out a way to do the same thing with everything else here, okay? And we don't want to do that manually, I wanna see if maybe we can use our, our loop tools for that, but probably I'm just gonna deflate this as well manually, I think that's gonna be necessary probably, but it doesn't work too well. It's gonna be a headache to do that from scratch maybe we can do something with our curves where the curve tool allows us to fill curved surfaces okay so it allows us to, to curve entire surfaces according to the surrounding area but i'm not sure if it's going to allow us to have smooth edges over here so the way that works is this we're going to select this entire section back here let's say like this all the way up to here where we have the top of this curve Control e mark seam whatever this is, let's get rid of that. Control E, clear seam. And we're gonna separate this to a new object, okay? And now you can take two curves like this and you can do W loop tools curve and it's gonna reshape the surface so it conforms to those two curves. But the problem is, as you can see here, it disconnects everything from the sides, which is not really good, all right? So maybe we ought to take the curves on the edges as well and try to do something, all right, curve. As then it completely messes everything up so that's not gonna work so I think this is probably a good idea for a start curve but we're gonna have to manually adjust the sides so that they fit with the edges over here on the outside and we can do that with alt s just bring it as close as we can like this and on this side over here as well just lift this up a lot of manual hand modeling as I like to call it because there's not really an easier way to do this maybe there is but I can't think of it right now okay something like this and then once this is close enough we're going to be able to merge vertices by distance we're going to do the same thing down here at the bottom as you can see it pushed this way below the surface over here so we're going to have to do something totally different but in any case now we're just going to have to manually connect everything 
we're gonna have to adjust the flow over here it's a complete disaster it's a complete headache to work with this type of stuff if you don't know what you're doing if you do know what you're doing it's kind of like something that generally you don't have to think too hard about because you're just kind of making tiny adjustments you're just kind of like it's kind of like woodwork or sculpting to some degree you're just making tiny little adjustments here and there to make sure that everything's flowing correctly you can't really mess anything up too bad hard surface modeling and hardcore topology usually requires you to think and to use your head and try to solve a puzzle which means you got to concentrate but you don't really have to concentrate as you can see i'm having a conversation with myself and the camera for the last 40 fucking minutes and i'm uh, i'm working with this the whole time right so it doesn't take that much brain power so I'm, what's gonna happen next is I'm just gonna continue to work with this shape. Maybe since this is a separate object, or we're gonna make it a separate object, maybe I'm gonna use a little bit of proportional editing and that's going to allow me to make smooth changes to this shape. Maybe not, maybe it is. And that's what I'm going to try. I'm gonna try a bunch of different shit, a bit more loop tools to try and connect everything, but I don't, wanna, I don't really have anything else to tell you because now it's just gonna be minor adjustments, which that's pretty much that's pretty much everything that I have for you. Now I'm just going to join everything with the 3D cursor and all this shit. So nothing more to add to this particular section. So in the next video, I'm going to make another change because I have a whole list of changes that I have to make on this model. So make sure that you subscribe if you want to watch the next series, learn something about Blender. All right. And I'm going to see you in the next one.